and welcome to the Heart Hook Home Video Crochet Podcast. My name is Ashley and I am your host and I am here with my two boys, my 15 year old and my 13 year old, who are modeling the new Swagger sweater. This is my new men's sweater that I've been talking about for months now and it feels like forever and it's almost time. So we are ready to show it off a little bit to talk about yarn choices, talk about the stitch that I used and all kind of good things. I also have a few new projects that I'll be sharing with you that should be coming out in the next week or so. And yeah, so talk to me about your sweater. Do you like it? It's a sweater. It's a sweater. Okay, that's fair. Do you like your sweater? It's snug. It's snug? You don't? <laughs> it's snug? I do think that after you wash it, it loosens up quite a bit. I've noticed that that stitch in particular is a little bit stiff, especially when you're crocheting with the worsted weight and that hook size. I did that on purpose though. I actually crocheted this sweater, um, almost the entire thing, and I washed it. I wove in all the ends and I washed it because I was afraid that it was a little bit too stiff. But then when it came out of the dryer, it was the perfect fabric and it felt really great. I really like the way that it feels. So that is definitely something to note. Um, as you are working up this sweater, it will probably feel pretty stiff, but um, after you wash it, especially many times, hopefully as your um, person that you're making this for um, wears it and you wash it over and over and over again, it becomes even more comfortable as you wear it, right? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. <laughs> so for this yarn or for this pattern, we are using a worsted weight yarn. This is Brava worsted that they are wearing. They, they are both the 500 skeins, which are a thousand forty yards. They're the ones the huge Brava skeins. So for those, um, this one is the Dove Heather colorway, which I absolutely love. The nice like silver look that that has to it. It's a very light gray. And then this one is the I think it's Asphalt Heather. It's almost black, but it's got gray in it. Can you come real close to the camera and show them the flecks of gray in that yarn? Isn't that nice? Yeah. And see how this stitch is worked in vertical columns? And you can see that the decreases on the sleeve on the underside are always on the armpit side and they're hidden, which is absolutely lovely. And I love how this creates, like we're working this back and forth in rows and joining at the side over here, but you can't really tell that because these stack on top of each other and it just looks really nice going all the way up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Thank you, good sir. Thank you, thank you. So the original concept for this men's sweater, I was talking to my brother, Forrest, and he was asking for a Raglan style top down sweater, which this is absolutely not. <laughs> I did try that first though with this stitch. It was, the increases were kind of funky. Um, I just, I couldn't figure out a way to do it that I actually liked. So I still have that men's Raglan sweater on the back burner. Um, and hopefully we have slots open at the end of the year. As you know, every month this year, I am publishing one new pattern and not gonna lie, I'm starting to feel kind of overwhelmed by that just a little bit. Um, I am working on June's already. It's a swimsuit cover up and it's on the little mannequin over here and I'm barely into it, but I'm feeling pretty confident. I spent two whole days trying different stitches for that and I wasn't happy with any of it. So do what? You wanna talk about a rod? Yeah, I am using this dowel rod. This is a one inch dowel rod and you could use a broomstick if you wanted to, um, to crochet that new swimsuit cover up. I know that sounds kind of interesting. It is not the broomstick lace stitch, which is very beautiful, but that is not what I am using for this um, swimsuit cover up. You know, now that I think about it, that would actually be really pretty, but that is not what we're doing, is it? Do they want a sneak peek? Do they? I don't know, should we do a sneak peek? If you wanna go grab it, that's fine. Just don't let the yarn rip out, okay? Got it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we are, I spent all last night, Cameron and I watched a movie. Um, what was it called? What movie was it? Uh, Instant Family. Oh, Instant Family, the one with Mark Wahlberg and they get the three adopted children. Um, and we watched Top Gun too. It was a little bit of a movie marathon, wasn't it? But I crocheted this while we were sitting there um, last night watching these movies. And I'm very happy with it so far. This is one that will definitely need to be blocked, but I'll show you a little bit closer up. It's got this great, um, 
zigzag look to it, these big loops, absolutely pretty, right? I love it. I think it's going to be a very nice open stitch design. I'm not gonna show you any more of it until it's ready, but that one is set to be published at the first week of June. Anyway, so you'll be seeing it here in a few weeks, which is absolutely mind boggling to me. I have so much on my plate, it's absolutely ridiculous. So one thing I did want to note, so today um, for podcast day is Friday, and that is May 6th, and thank you, sir. Um, I may end up getting this pattern published Friday, May 6th, um, but I'm waiting on one of my testers to make sure that the sleeve is perfect for her size. And so I thought maybe I'd wait until Sunday, but then Sunday is Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to all of you fellow mothers out there. And yeah, so I don't want to do the live on Sunday. So I'm thinking if we don't do it um, on Friday, May 6th, then we will do it next Wednesday. But I will definitely keep you posted because I want to have the boys with me when we do our live video um, so that everyone can ask questions and show it off and all of that good stuff. Um, one other thing I wanted to talk about about the men's sweater is that the buttonholes at the top, we've got this open placket style top here. And on one side, we've got just single crochet stitches and that's where we're gonna place those buttons. And on the other side, we're using that alternating single crochet spike stitch that we looked at, I believe last time or two, two times ago. Um, it is a very easy stitch. All it is a single crochet. It's just where you place your hook that makes the difference. So that tutorial is already out on Heart Hook Home. And one thing that I like about it, or one thing that I, the part of the reason that I chose to do it, the placket style, like this so that we've got the single crochet on this side over here and then we've got this regular alternating single crochet spike on this side which means that if we're using the right size buttons then they will fit through any side on the opposite edge so you don't have to create specific buttonholes it makes the pattern go a lot easier a lot quicker and I think it's just easier to understand you know so yeah do you have any Oh, did you see the pictures I shared? I'll, I'll put some picture in lace here of the boys. We went to the park um, down the street and we modeled and I've got some GQ models, don't I? Mm -hmm. You want to be a model? No? You sure got great hair though. Thank you. <laughs> what about you? No, absolutely not. <laughs> well, I appreciate you guys. Thank you mm -hmm. for doing this and you look great. I hope you like your sweater. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. If you want to get off of camera, you can. I'm going to talk about some things that I have in my basket here. You want to stay? I'll go. Oh, you're going to go. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> I'm going to talk about a few of the other things that I've got on my hook. I don't think they could get out of here fast enough, to be honest with you. <laughs> but um, one of the new things that I've got fresh off of my hook, um, so I've got the swimsuit cover up that I'm working on. In July, I am working on a brand new cardigan that is going to be a duster length or at least mm, mid-calf length, maybe not all the way down, but it is going to be absolutely fabulous. So I have ordered a rainbow array of yarn for this one. I have one, two, three, four, five, six different colors. And for this pattern, I am using Shine Sport because I love the way that it feels. I love the way that it drapes. I love the sheen of it. It's got a 60% Pima cotton and 40% mold which is absolutely it's it's the best it's got the greatest sheen to it so I've picked colors um, that are super super bright can you see how bright some of these are let me position this like this you see this purple down here I absolutely love that purple and that vibrant blue this one's called dandelion right here absolutely it's I mean it's if that's not dandelion I don't know what is and then there's grapefruit and all kinds of goodies and this one might be my new favorite shine sport color it is the cosmopolitan and I love how bright pink that is absolutely fabulous so what I'm thinking for this one what I'm my design process for this cardigan specifically is 
to have a kind of a rainbow effect from the bottom up. I want it to be a long, I, I'm not sure if I want it to be a really holy stitch or a really dense stitch. I ordered enough yarn just in case. I wanted it to be a little more dense. I was thinking maybe a herringbone double crochet, but then that might be a little warm. It might be too hot because it's so long, you know? So maybe we'll do an open weave. I am also thinking I need to do something in Tunisian, but I'm not sure. I think that Tunisian garments, um, I think they can kind of scare people away or they could be intimidating and I don't want to do that definitely. So I'm, I'm throwing that around right now. So like I said um, in previous podcasts at the beginning of the month, right when I release a new pattern like this men's sweater that I'm about to publish here in the next week or so, um, I'm already starting to think about the month that's following that. So my swimsuit cover up that I've been working on, I have worked on that for two solid days, um, playing with stitches and ripping them out and that is one thing I was planning on using curio number three which is a crochet thread um, in the number three size I tried number three and I crochet tried crochet thread number 10 and I just didn't like how it was hanging I couldn't I've tried all these different hook sizes from a C which is a tiny little thing up to an H and just different stitches different combinations different everything and it was just not working out and yeah so I decided to go with these cakes instead. And I will say that what I, one thing that I wanted to stick with is definitely a cotton or a majority cotton blend because if it's going to be in the summer, if we're gonna be getting wet at all or sweating, I mean, let's be real, um, you don't wanna be in something acrylic or wool or anything like that. I found stroll fingering in my yarn cabinet and I thought, oh my gosh, that would be perfect because the colors would lay just perfectly and we can make two that mirror each other and join in the middle, you know what I mean, with the gradient yarn color changes. Um, but it just, uh, I, I'm not going to use a wool blend yarn for that. So um, I did end up using a yarn that is not a wee crochet yarn, which is perfectly fine. I am not um, exclusive to them, of course, but this is going to be absolutely perfect. I think what the yarn that I ended up going with, I think it's a 60% uh, cotton and I'm really crossing my fingers that what I showed you earlier is going to end up working out. So cross your fingers for me. So this yarn here is what I'm going for in July, right? So I'm already starting to think of all of these stitches that I want to include. One of the things that I thought to do is maybe for each different color that we have, um, we're going to have maybe, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to do probably about eight, eight inches because I've got six colors. So we're looking, eh, that'd be a good length for mid calf ish right and I definitely want pockets on it and I want them to line up with the rainbow colors um yeah so I thought maybe if we have six different colors what if we did six different stitches so the pink is one block of crochet and that is with one stitch and then we switch to the purple this is iris we switch to the iris colorway and a different stitch for that eight inches of crochet and then we switch to the blue and we switch to a different stitch for that one so that's something that I'm toying um, with too maybe I don't know it could be as easy as a double crochet moth stitch type of thing you know and and going from there so I want it to be I don't want it to be too dense to where it's warm but I don't want it to be too holy to where it loses its shape or that the pocket makes the fabric distort around, especially at the top corners of the pocket where it's attached. So those are my thought process on that. But this is something that I'm going to be working on immediately. <laughs> this yarn was just delivered earlier today and I couldn't believe it. I ordered it on Monday and today's Thursday and it was delivered like crazy. Um, super quick, love that about We Crochet. So yeah, I am excited about that new project. The last thing I wanted to talk to you about today is the peak stitch blanket. So you may remember that a few months ago, I came out with um, a new video tutorial for the peak stitch, P-I-Q-U-E. It's the same stitch that I talked about with my sister Meadow when she was a special guest on the podcast. And we were working up those socks, which are still in progress. I've just got so much on my plate right now. Those socks have not have been on a deadline. So I've been kind of pushing them out. They're almost done. Literally all I have to do is right the toe and re-crochet them. Um, I just haven't had time to do that. But the peak stitch is 
is absolutely gorgeous. So I was sitting in bed one night and I couldn't sleep. So I grabbed my yarn and I grabbed my hook and I started working up the peak stitch in a granny style pattern from the center out, which is great for a lot of different reasons. Namely, you can stop whenever you want to stop and it's as big as it's going to get, or you can continue to go until it's larger than a king size blanket. If you absolutely wanted to, I can't imagine doing that myself, but, um, but that is an option <laughs> if you want to do that. So I decided to try that. I decided to work it up with a really large yarn and it just was looking kind of sloppy. So my good friend over at We Crochet said that they've got this brand new yarn coming out and would I crochet a baby blanket or anything um, with this new yarn? And I thought, oh my gosh, that would be perfect for that peak stitch granny square blanket idea that I had. And so here we are. So on Monday... May 9th, I will be publishing this brand new pattern for this brand new baby blanket, which is absolutely perfect. I worked on this for a few days solid, and I have to tell you guys, this is like one of the most beautiful things that I just absolutely love it. And even better, the day that I agreed to crochet this with this brand new yarn, I found out that one of my very oldest friends is having a baby. So that's exciting. So we're gonna mail this over to them so to welcome the new baby and it just ended up being perfect. So I do think that, you know, if I ever get around to it, I do think that this would make an excellent blanket for sitting on the couch. Um, if you make it, you know, large that where enough people can sit underneath it um, when you're watching Netflix with the family or whatever, or for the blanket for the guest room, just keep it on hand, you know, if you wanted to make one in cotton to make it a nice, almost a weighted blanket because that can get really heavy if you use um, enough cotton and it gets big enough, it could be almost a weighted blanket for, you know, um, if you sleep better under weighted blanket conditions, right? Um, let's see. There are, hmm, I don't want to go too much into this yarn yet, but I will definitely edit this video on Monday when this blog post is published with this new pattern. This is a free pattern available with this brand new yarn that I will have um, ready in the blog post for you when this pattern is ready. So, um, let's see. I also have a few other things that I am working on. I am working on, you know, Father's Day is coming up in June and I am working on a men's scarf that is a reversible scarf pattern, which is absolutely mind boggling to me how easy it is and how fun it is to work up. It's working up remarkably quickly. So look for that definitely um, coming, that it will be published, I believe May 20th um, is when that one will be published. So we've only got a few more weeks for that, but get, that gives you almost an entire month to crochet a scarf for Father's Day for whomever you will be gifting that. I am also working on, I don't remember, I don't know if you remember when my mom was a special guest a month ago, we were talking about that really long sofa blanket, right? That I wanted it to be long enough that all of the family members could cozy up underneath it and cuddle up, you know, and it's only going to be maybe four feet tall ish. So it's going to be pretty short, but very, very long. I have started that and I want you to know that it was 400 chains and that was the worst um, 20 minutes um of recent memory <laughs> um and then the hour um after that of going through crocheting through the chain back to get that pattern established it was absolutely yeah worth it we're gonna say it was worth it because as you know with a ripple or a chevron pattern you can't do a foundation chain um or a foundation stitch you have to do the foundation chain and crochet back into it because you need those decreases and the increases i mean i guess you maybe could do a foundation row that way but it would be confusing and it might not turn out um I might not turn out. I'm, now I want to try it. I want to try that now. Maybe I'll do that. But I've got three rows done and it took me three hours to do that. <laughs> As I crochet each um, additional row, of course, it'll go faster. And I have switched it up a little bit. It is so much fun. I'm using a light gray, the same gray that Caden was modeling in his sweater. And then I'm using a dark gray, which is the same gray that Cameron was modeling in his sweater. And then I'm using a beautiful, beautiful, vibrant purple that's about this, this shade so I've got light gray dark gray in that beautiful eggplant color and it's absolutely beautiful and all three of those um, colors are available in the Brava 500 skeins which is something that I really like too so I got one of those huge skeins of each which is over 3,000 yards of yarn 
I don't know if that's going to be enough, but if it's not, it's going to be pretty close. And all of those are available in smaller Brava skeins too. So I'm excited about that pattern as well. So what else do I have new that's coming out? Hmm. Oh, next week, um, next Friday is the new car series pattern. This one is something I'm about halfway through with this one and it is going to be absolutely fabulous. It's something that everyone needs in their car. Uh, we're going to incorporate a fun aspect to it that makes it, um, just takes it up a notch, right? Or two, um, yeah. So let's think. I have, an, I have a wedding that I'm going to in a few weeks and I, have, I bought this dress online praying it fits and it looks well and also that I feel confident on the day that I'm going to wear it because it's kind of I mean it's 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 not like super revealing or anything but it's kind of tight and for that reason I am going to crochet a very short little bolero um, just to wear over it um, I'm going to I'm planning to use a pretty holy stitch for that because it's the end of May like it's gonna be pretty warm and probably pretty humid here in Kansas so I want something a little bit lightweight that just covers up just enough and um, to where I don't feel super exposed <laughs> you know what I mean uh, but it's going to be very pretty so fingers crossed on that one too I've got so much going on it's absolutely un unbelievable and I'm sure that I forgot a few things as well but make sure that you are watching for the swagger sweater that's what I'm calling the new men's sweater that is coming out this week and when that pattern is published I will definitely let you know on the Facebook page on Heart Hook Home Facebook page um, the date of that release but when that is published you will want to use code swagger so it's the swagger sweater so we're just going to call it swagger for the coupon code. So all caps, S-W-A-G-G-E-R, and it will take half off of that pattern price for the first, mm, usually I do at least several, four to seven days-ish. So we'll see um, what day ends up publishing and um, just use that coupon code and you'll get half off. And yeah, it's gonna be great. I'm excited to see your sweaters and I will keep you updated and I look forward to seeing you in two weeks on the next episode of the Heart Hook Home Video Crochet Podcast. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.